Did you know there is a PWM controller you can make solely based on one simple transistor circuit? Yes, you heard me right. Today we're gonna make a PWM controller which basically lets you control the speed of a motor, set the brightness of a light or just the heat of a heating element using nothing but simple analog circuitry and components you probably already have lying around. Even though you can find plenty of circuit diagrams for simple PWM controllers online, they pretty much all seem to be built around the ubiquitous 555 Timer IC. Which is a little bit strange because you don't actually need any integrated circuit to do pulse width modulation. And also, not everyone has a 555 Timer IC lying around in a corner, do they? Now let's take a look at our circuit diagram and as you can see there is no need for an integrated circuit whatsoever. I'll explain to you how that works later, but for now let's just go ahead and gather the components we're gonna need to put everything temporarily together on a breadboard. For this circuit you can use any type of general purpose NPN transistor like the 2N2222, the BC547, the S8050, the S9014 or probably just about any NPN transistor there is. Then we need two 1000 ohm resistors, a 1 mega ohm resistor, a 100k resistor, a 4.7 kilo ohm resistor, a 100k potentiometer, two 100 nanofarad ceramic capacitors, a 1N4004 rectifier diode, and last but not least, an N channel MOSFET like the IRF640N I'm using. Well, let's put it together, shall we? So to try it out I'm going to connect my little mini siren to the output which has got a normal brushed DC motor on it and runs fine at about 3 to 12 volts and for power I'm going to use a 3S lithium battery which is around 12 volt. And now once I start turning the potentiometer the motor should start very slowly. And the higher I turn the potentiometer, the higher the speed of the motor goes. I love it when the pitch of the siren gradually increases like that. I love this circuit, especially when connected to the siren. Like any other PWM controller, this circuit works just as well for controlling lights and heating elements as it does with brushed DC motors. Now you might ask, why the heck is this circuit even a thing if all the other ones needed a 555 timer to do the pulse width modulation? Well, that's because this part of our circuit is basically what's inside a 555 timer chip among other stuff obviously, but in this case we don't need the other stuff, so we can just simply pick out the nice simple multivibrator, fill it up using discrete components and we've got ourselves a PWM generator. To show you in a more visual manner how the multivibrator modulates the pulse width, let me first do some modifications to the circuit. Adding two LEDs and swapping the capacitors for electrolytic capacitors with a much higher value should do the trick. So if I power up the circuit now, it's going to do the exact same thing as before, just much, 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 much slower, leaving us enough time to actually see what's going on. So I'm going to turn the potentiometer to its midpoint and plug it in. And as you can see, both LEDs light up for an equal amount of time, with the motor going off every time the right LED fades. And I know it's confusing that the motor does the exact opposite of what the right LED does, but that's because for the right LED to light up, 
the right transistor needs to be turned on. But each time the right transistor gets conductive, it basically drains all the voltage from the gate of the MOSFET, switching it off in the process. Now, with the potentiometer at its midpoint like that, it makes for a nice duty cycle of 50%, but as soon as I turn the potentiometer away from its midpoint in either direction, one of these capacitors gets charged faster and the other one slower by an equal amount, which basically makes the oscillation of the circuit lopsided, if you will, reducing one of the LEDs to short pulses, while the other one stays on for most of the time. If I turn the potentiometer down even further all the way to the end of its travel, these pulses just get shorter and shorter until, right at the end, it just gets stuck on one LED for a duty cycle of 0 or 100% respectively, and it'll stay like that until you turn up the potentiometer again, and then it'll pick up and start oscillating again. I'm sorry I may not be very good at explaining stuff like that, but I hope you got the point there. Anyway, one thing that bothers me about this circuit is that it needs a MOSFET. Because like 555 timers, MOSFETs don't grow on trees either, and I've only ever managed to salvage two of them, because they just seem to be very rare in consumer electronics. Although, now that I think about it, maybe it doesn't need a MOSFET after all. Let's check that out. I'll just leave the circuit in slow motion mode as is and replace the MOSFET with a dot linking configuration of transistors. Let's see what happens. Yeah, that's pretty much what I expected. It's not a proper pulse width modulation. It's doing pulses, but as you can see there is no duty cycle of 50% and the right LED is lit almost all the time. That's because the transistor pulls too much current away from this capacitor for it to recharge properly. Now, it would probably still work. You could probably make it work better by balancing out the components with the transistors over there, but it's not a proper pulse width modulation. That's kind of like in quantum physics, where as soon as you try to measure the exact pinpoint location of a particle, you destroy the particle itself. Except that in this case, the MOSFET's the magical measuring instrument, which does not destroy the particle by measuring its position. Nevertheless, I think it's finally time to solder the functioning circuit with the MOSFET on a circuit board. Well, time to see if this goes as soon as I connect it to the battery. And that's actually not too far-fetched, because I did have stuff emit a puff of smoke in the past, and over 50% of all the circuits I ever put to circuit board initially didn't do anything. Not even what they were supposed to do. So I think it's with a reason that I'm not very confident this will work first try. Connect the purple wires to the motor, black to the minus on the battery and the moment of truth is it going to do anything yeah that's not what it should do already and that's what I said it doesn't do anything if I turn on the potentiometer and oh it's getting toasty how nice so well that's exactly what I meant so I'll just go and see what the error is 
fix it and then I'll come back. Well, I fixed it and now it works just fine. And as usual, some of the things that were connected shouldn't have been connected after all. Basically shorting out two resistors and speaking of resistors, I made a big mistake with these two resistors up there. They should have both been connected to the gate of the MOSFET, but only one of them was and they were both switched in series. So not a big surprise it didn't work after all. <laughs> Although, to my defense, I have to say that remapping any circuit to fit onto a reasonably small piece of stripboard is quite tricky. The specifications for this circuit are about 10 to 14 volts, although 12 volts seem to be the sweet spot. I'm just making assumptions there, but it doesn't really work that well on 5 volts, that's for sure. And the maximum amperage is pretty much whatever the maximum continuous current of your MOSFET is. Anyway, that's pretty much everything I had to say about this circuit. I just wanted to share it with you guys because it's a very useful little circuit and I just haven't seen it anywhere else so far. If you want to make this thing yourself, I'm going to put up the schematic on my website for you to download. Just right click the image, select save as and go from there. And as usual, the link will be in the video description. If you don't have the exact same components as I did, don't let that put you off, just try it with whatever you have lying around. Generally, analog circuits aren't that picky. For example, the 1K resistors could just as well be 1.5K or even 2K or maybe even 4.7K without it making any difference. And in fact, the 4.7K resistor is actually a 5.6K one on this circuit here just because I didn't have a small 4.7K resistor lying around. Also, the potentiometer could be a 47K potentiometer instead of 100K and it should still work fine. Anyway, I think I'm done talking now. Somehow, I always end up talking way too much. But if you're new around here, in between talking, I also do these projects. And if you enjoy my content, please consider subscribing so I can make more of it. And apart from that, I absolutely love reading your feedback in the comments. So till next time, goodbye. And oh, it's getting toasty!